So welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning into Sharesy's Share Club. We'll be speaking with Mary and Jane. So Jane's just popped up. Oh, and now we've got Mary. Welcome. Thank you. Hi there. <laughs> Mary's yeah. in my office in Auckland, so I just want to know what it's like up there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jane, I'm in your office. This is a bit silly, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary, are you in Jane's office? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, just keep things good. tidy, okay? This is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> what happens in this room. time of virus? <laughs> Everything weird happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. So, um, who we've got here is. Mary Holm, who's a best-selling personal finance author and seminar presenter. And we've got Jane Wrightson, who's the new retirement commissioner at the Commission for Financial Capability. So welcome, both of you, and thank you so much for being here. Um, if there's anything you want to add to introduce yourselves before we kick into some questions on this segment, um, please feel free to. Anything? You um, I, oh, Jane, you go. <laughs> Oh, not at all. I was simply saying I've been in my current role for all of six weeks. So I am really privileged to share a screen with Mary Home, who knows everything. Really. <laughs> so whatever she says is right. Whatever I say, <laughs> consider with a great deal of caution. Oh, oh Jane. What, what I was just going to add is that I'd write a personal finance column in the Herald Q&A column and also do a, a segment, a fortnightly segment on segment on Radio New Zealand. And for both of those, I'm getting flooded, or especially the column, with emails from people wondering about about the virus and how it's going to affect their investments, and a lot of panic and all that. But mm. also, um, people with great ideas about how to make money in the in this <laughs> current environment, which are quite interesting questions. Yeah, there's definitely no shortage of um, stories out there about this at the moment. And um, we know it's very front of mind for our investors. So I think thank you so much, both of you, for being here and being part of the conversation um, and sharing any thoughts you have about this. So um, we'll kick off. We'll just start talking a bit about um, in times like these, um, you know, what are some investment and strategies that people should be adopting um, at this time? It kind of depends on your life stage, doesn't it? Um, and the boys were talking about that before. So it's about where you are in your investment journey. And if you're at the beginning of it, um, younger generally, or at the end of it, older generally, then you've got some difficult questions to ask yourself and the need for professional advice, I think, is really crucial. If you're in the early mid part of it, then again, I concur with what Patrick and Stuart said. Keep calm, carry on. We have seen some of this before. We've never seen a global pandemic in our lifetime, although my grandparents have had. Um, what's interesting now, I think, is um, again, it's the ability of people to have the so much information at your fingertips now. And that is a blessing and a curse which is why I think those of us um, who are a little older go, please keep calm and don't panic because too much information just scares the bejesus out of you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so certainly. I, I mean, I'm like like Patrick who mentioned he hasn't had a look at what's happened to his investments. I haven't Me neither. Either. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that interested really. I, I just know that in the long run they'll be all right. And um, I had a letter from a woman that I was reading today who's, who said, God, my KiwiSaver has gone down by so many thousand dollars. And when I calculated it through, it had gone down 6%, which is, and she, she was talking about being possum in the headlights and, and really yeah. panicking yeah. about it. And a 6% drop, when you look at that in the context of what's been happening in the markets for the last 10 years, where there's been, you know, really steady increases with, you know, the, the little bips going down, but, but the increases have gone up and up and up. It's nothing what's happening really so far. It, it's in in the context of, of a few years. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a letter this, this week that said, there is from, a, from a somebody in their 60s saying, they're taking money out of my KiwiSaver account and it's got to stop. Oh, and, nice. and, you know, you're getting down to a fundamental thing between the difference between savings and investment. Mm. Um, so the Commission for Financial Capability um, what we know is that financial education or financial literacy, if you like, is, continues to be incredibly crucial because this is very hard stuff. We know that the industry traditionally has uh, befuddled us with acronyms and numbers, and we need excellent communicators like Patrick and like Mary to explain it for us. Yeah, it's that, 
that some um, that comment from that person is I, I'm one of the things that I don't like about the bank providers and some of the other KiwiSaver providers is that when you, that you can terribly easily get access to your account balance. I'm sure you can on Sharesies too, Sonia, but it's perhaps not in your face as much. And, and hopefully people who use Sharesies aren't day by day looking at their balances. It's, it's really um, pointless, actually. It, and, and they're going to go up and down. And in the, I was looking at some data the other day um, for the last 29 years in, in New Zealand share markets, only six of those 29 have there been losses. And in five out of those six, the following year, there were big gains. They were gains from um, between 13, I think, and 24% in the years after the losses. And so nearly always, when there's a down year, there's a good year, 13% to 24%, percent fantastic, um, in the year after. And... And the one that wasn't was the global financial crisis, where it took a couple of years to come right again. But it always does come right. It always will. And so people have just got to... Um, I think what just, you said about the Sharesies audience is interesting, because I have you know I work on the Sharesies Facebook group, um, just to take a thermometer, really. And because what, what um, the people on that group are doing is something I really wish I'd done at their age, frankly. Oh, <laughs> Taken yes. some information and... and um, used it to um, adopt a bit of a strategy. But you can yes. see that people are in a habit of checking their account every day, if not twice a day. And that's yes. fabulous when you're on a roll. Mm. And that first couple of months I was working on it, people were so excited. And I've gone up 50 bucks and I've made 2,000 this week and I bought some more and it's all outstanding. And I thought, these guys have never seen a bear. And here's yeah. the bear. And the, yes. the point is, they happen. And unless you need the money right now, sit tight. Yeah, or, or better still, keep investing, actually. I mean, mm. I've had quite a few people saying, you know, the quotes about blood in the streets, that's when you should, in, should buy, is when there's blood in the streets. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's what's called contrarian investing, when you put, you, you put money into the markets when everyone else is taking it out and, and, and when the markets are falling. Um, and you will do better than the people that react the other way and pull their money out when the markets are going down and put more in when the markets are going up. Contrarian investing is better than that. But a lot of research shows that the best way, the easiest way, and the way that gets you the best results in the long run is to just keep on putting a regular amount in. That happens with most people's KiwiSaver. But in, in shares, these investments, um, you can certainly set it up so you do have regular contributions. Can't do, Sonia, mm -hmm. 100 yeah. bucks a a month or or, or whatever mm -hmm. and your 100 bucks is going to buy you a lot more at the moment than it did a month ago mm -hmm. and so it's really good to keep those regular investments going it's it's the way to make to get rich in the long run i think it's i think it was either patrick or, or it was to be patrick i think said be careful if you're stock picking that's yes. that's a job for experts and yep. people think that they're experts and they're generally not. So that's yeah. that's a very aggressive strategy. But go for funds that have got a track record run by people who clearly know what they're talking about and don't yes. expect to know more than they do. Or there's nothing wrong with buying individual shares, but, you know, get a widely diversified portfolio mm. in a lot of different industries and, and don't, yes, you're right, Jane, don't try and pick mm. which particular shares are going to do really well. Aim to get into it at least 10 different shares and with a widespread and and don't try and pick your winners because you probably won't and if people are thinking about buying hand sanitizer stocks you know that'll be a bath boom for a year <laughs> and then there'll be a bust <laughs> yeah everyone will, have, everyone will have it left over in their bathroom cupboards for the next 10 years and not buying anymore yeah um so mary you mentioned before um someone referring to a six percent loss um and you made a comment about that um you know, not being uh, such a big loss. Um, yeah. Do you mind giving a bit more context about like what we're seeing now um, and, and how this relates to other periods in the past where, um, where you mentioned you've been doing some research into to other areas or other times where this has happened? Yes, yeah. The, um, I was just looking at the numbers of, as I say, back to 1991, that was some data I, I happened to, come across mm -hmm. and and there were 
did I already say there were only six years out of those 29 years when the markets actually went down in the course of the calendar year or all, all the other years that went up and and the losses in those years except for the global financial crisis and every other one of those losses was eight percent or less minus eight percent you know which is not that big a deal it, um um uh, yeah we have the it's been worrying me for a long time that since kiwi saver started the there was a global financial crisis at the very beginning in 07 mm. and 08 but no one had much money in kiwi saver yet a lot of people weren't mm. even in and the ones who were didn't have much money didn't take that much notice of it and since then it's just been an extraordinarily good market so anyone who's feeling upset and worried about what's happening lately if you've been in there even if you've only been in for a couple of years but especially if you've been in for 10 years or so um whether we're talking kiwi saver or other types of investments you've done terrifically well and um this is just a little adjustment that's going to you know we don't the markets might not go down much more than they are now we don't know they the the experts have already said this is things are not looking good in the future and so they they don't wait for what happens in the future they sell now if they think it's looking bad in the next mm -hmm. few months and the markets could you know start drifting back up again well, who knows when but yeah it's, that it's leads honest. that leads in nicely to um a question that's come up um, from some of our viewers around um, is there any way to estimate when shares will be at their lowest price before going up again and what, no. are, your, what are your thoughts on that? No, um, it's quite simple and what happens with people trying to pick the bottom and what happens is they you know they might say, say oh well, I think today's the bottom and then tomorrow the market goes up a little bit and the next day it goes up a bit more and they say yeah yeah um what's today wednesday wednesday was the bottom oh well it's friday it's close to the bottom i'm going to get out now but um then or get in now depending on your your response to these markets um but then you know the market might drift back up again for quite a few days and then it'll go back down again it'll go down even further i mean there's just absolutely no way to pick when a market's turning until about six months later because three then months later it That's still right. might be going yeah. up and then going back down again that's yeah in my 1987 run. story when i was investing my sister's money not mine so that was even better <laughs> you know there was chatter all the way through the early mid part of 87 going oh my god um things are going to be bad and yet the stocks were going up and up and up and up and i pulled out four months before the well, crash okay. day well, I know, but for that four months, I can tell you I was pissed off. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, it was worth it. You can't pick it. No. Yeah. Oh, what a story. <laughs> yeah. I'd pulled all mine out of the market before, about a year before to, to buy a house. Oh. Um, so that was just sheer luck. It, look, there's so much luck in That's why I hadn't any money in there because I was buying a house too. <laughs> Were you? Yes. It looked, from the perspective of, of the boomers, you know, you get some good luck and some bad luck and a heck of a lot of it is luck either way. But you can't beat the steady investing a fixed amount regardless of what's happening that's what the winners do yeah yeah it brings all new meaning to share luck when you put it yes. like that share well. luck yes very good um so knowing that these times are so uncertain and and things around um not being able to ever really pick the market or time the market um what are some things that we can learn about saving and investing at times like these yeah there's a lot you can learn really and and one thing is that markets do go down and 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 people can learn how they feel about that but there there are two um basic questions to help you decide whether you should have your certain money in shares or not and one is when you're going to spend it and i say it's really got to be 10 years or more away um certainly eight years or more away if it's money you're going to be spending earlier than that like people saving for um a first home and kiwi saver um, that money shouldn't be in high risk funds, it should be in middle or low risk funds. Um, so it's when you're going to spend the money and it's also your tolerance of, uh, of volatility. And people are really learning that now who didn't know that before, that they just are too nervous, they can't cope. Um, and if, if that's you, if you're finding you can't cope with the volatility, even though you're not planning to spend the money 
for the, in the next few years, um, please just try and don't bail out now or, or move to a lower risk fund or something like that now. Um, please just try and sit there for, for a few months and, and just watch what's happening, remembering that after most downturns the following year you get a big upturn yeah. and if, if not a year or two later than that you do so it's it's really sickening when people sell when the markets are down yeah. and make that loss real That's otherwise right. at the moment it's just on paper <laughs> it's, it is, it yeah. is. and if you've got really high anxiety about this then you know if, and if you're contributing into a regular investment say then maybe stop doing that but keep what you've got invested invested Yes, although I hate to see people stop the regular investing. I know what you're saying, Jane. Yeah. I mean, because some that's people that's just, I'm a chicken around this. <laughs> yeah, if people just want to do something. The something to do is learn that you're in a fund that's too risky for your personality and take steps to change that. Maybe move, you know, a quarter of your money out now and a quarter, plan to move a quarter out in three months' time and a quarter out in six months' time, something like that. So at least you don't end up moving the whole lot out at the very, what ends up being the very bottom, which mm -hmm. we can't foresee until later. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Um, so things like, um, are there any tips or, or things of how you should structure your finances to, um, to help ride out these times of events? Yeah, well, um, if if we're talking the whole virus situation, some people might lose their jobs, you know, despite the government stepping in and doing some pretty exciting stuff, actually, mm. to sort of keep the jobs going and, and keep the economy going. But even so, there will be some job losses, etc. And that points up the need for a rainy day fund. Um, that a lot of people I think haven't quite really bothered with and it's really a good idea to have three months income ideally. Um, I think a good place to park it is in, in one month term deposits um, because then and then you can put any emergency spending on a credit card and by the time you have to pay the credit card bill the, the one month maturity would have happened and you would have got access to that money mm -hmm. so it's really important to have that money there for people it makes it a heck of a lot less stressful when things mm -hmm. don't go well it does and the rainy day fund looks so boring when yeah. things are on a roll doesn't it you yes. sit there and go oh, that money earning nothing in the bank yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> now's yes. when you need it yeah mm -hmm. and if you have a look on um interest.co.nz or one of that's one of the websites that's, that lists the um, interest rates on the different types of term, different banks, term deposits. Um, go for, you know, have a look there because there is quite a lot of variation in what the different banks mm. offer and you might as well get the highest rate you can. You don't have to go with your own bank. Um, our banks aren't particularly loyal to customers always and so I think customers don't have to be loyal back necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. And there's lots of tips and tools on our sorted website. You know, if you're feeling really nervy, then go and play around with some of those and see what your own position looks like. And then mm -hmm. obviously talk to your provider or an advisor if you're starting to get worried or you think you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. But you can take action, which is learn yourself some more stuff, but try and ignore some of the chatter around all of this and go to reputable places, interest.co.nz, Mary's column, our sorted. Mm -hmm and get some calm information there, which will help you think about what you need right now. And as mm -hmm. all of us are saying, if you don't need the money right now, be very careful about taking any swift action. Yeah, yeah. so that, that does lead into the next question, which is, um, you know, say we talked a bit about um, how people might be feeling some anxiety now. Um, say you did, say you were considering selling. Um, what, what should you think about before selling your investments? And, and then how do you know when to sell? <laughs> That's one for Mary. <laughs> um, when to sell, not because the markets are down, please. I mean, the, the reasons to sell are that you need the cash to do something, you know, maybe to buy a house or, or um, as you're approaching retirement, you might be starting to think, well, I need... Um, some money coming out of my investments to, to supplement New Zealand super. Um, though that's when you should sell, not not when you when the markets are going down. Um, but now there's something else to your question, Sonia. I'm just trying to remember. Um, when it was, you should how sell, do you know when to? When to sell, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's when you need the money is, is the basic question. And 
I had some an interesting correspondence in my Herald column recently about whether you should, which shares you should sell if you've got mm. a range of shares. <laughs> and there are, there are two schools of thought on that. One is, um, let's say you had a portfolio of, of 10 shares and they were all about 10% of your portfolio. So you set it up, which is a good idea to make them quite even sort of holdings. But if one company's done particularly well, after a while it might become 15 or even 20% of the portfolio just because it's grown so much. And so one school of thought says sell some of those um, because otherwise that one company is becoming too dominant in your portfolio. I mean, some examples of how that could happen is people might have recently been thinking Air New Zealand's a good bet or, or Auckland Airport's a good bet and been overweight in those particular mm. shares and look what's happened. No one could have foreseen no. what how those two companies would be hit. So it's quite a good good idea to to sell down the big the ones that have got big. It means you're selling your winners and some people don't like doing that. They think, no, no, I love that share. That's the one that's done so well. But you know, it might be the one that turns around later. Then there's a whole other school of thought. Um which is to, to sell uh, a, 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 a experienced investor sent this into my column, sell the ones that have dropped more than 20%, not when the markets dropped 20%, but when they alone have dropped, whereas the rest of the market's mm -hmm. cruising along, um, get rid of those before they get, do even worse. You know, um, mm. as he himself confessed, it can be quite hard to do that because people, there's a psychological barrier against <laughs> selling for less than you bought for. Lost aversion. Know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you say, no, no, I just want to wait until it gets back up to what I paid for it. And the trouble is, of course, it might never mm. um, get back up. And and so, but but look, so I'm saying on one hand, maybe sell your winners, on another hand, maybe sell your losers. Um, and a third option, which might be the best one of all, is just to, to throw darts at a, at a list on the wall and sell the one that they land on, honestly, because there's a lot of research that suggests picking which shares to buy and which ones to sell. You're not really going to beat, beat the experts and you might as well not bother trying, really. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It's hard, and eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just conscious of time, but I think... Um, you know, really understanding that there's so much kind of panic out there or, or and it's a very human nature thing to do, um, to get excited when it's going up and then start panicking when your portfolio is going down. Um, but what are some tips and tricks um, that we or you wouldn't mind sharing with our viewers around how we can deal with the uncertainty that is going on at the moment, but also how to combat the fear and panic um, that people might be feeling in moments like these? Don't check your balance every day. Don't even no. check it every week and maybe leave it for a month or two because really, again, if you're thinking about not pulling out your money, there's no point. You'll just make no. yourself unhappy. Um, yes. And I liked, I liked um, um, Patrick's notion a little while ago, which said don't end up underestimate the power of companies to innovate mm. in the crisis. Yep. So keep an eye on what companies are doing because I can tell you all of us running organisations have spent since last Friday going, oh God. And then by Monday, we've got a bit of a plan. And by mm. Tuesday, we're talking to our staff and our staff have got great ideas too. And you know, we will get through this. That's the of thing. It's, it's an extraordinary thing we're dealing with. We have seen a, a wonderful response, proactive response from our government, some excellent proactive responses from other governments, some fairly mm -hmm. shit ones from other ones, but they'll get the hang of them in a minute that there's things going on. And it will be okay. It just feels bad at the moment. Yeah. That's absolutely true that, I mean, in the long run, people are still going to be buying goods and services and, you know, that that won't change. And so companies that provide the goods and services are going to keep on making money. I mean, you know, the, the particular industries are going through a hard time now, but that won't change. We've just got to look back at the long-term history and, um, yeah, It'll it'll be all right, honestly. Go to the beach. It's a beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful day here in it's Auckland. Today, the beach and and, and stream some rom coms. You know, <laughs> do that. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's freezing in Wellington. <laughs> I just want to also endorse what Jane said. Oh, is it? Pre oh, you poor things. Oh, oh um, well, uh, go and um, build a fire <laughs> or something like that. But but um, I just want to endorse what Jane said about the, the tools on Sorted. There's an, a lot of really good, easy to use, and in some cases, kind of fun tools on there too. Mm -hmm. So th that'd be a neat thing to be doing in an evening playing around on on the sort of website and seeing what yeah. what you could learn there and also get a bit of entertainment out of some of it it's so yeah. good well thank you both of you um any final thoughts that you'd want to share before we wrap up um that we didn't explicitly cover um relax <laughs> it's yeah, all right relax. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, what a lovely sentiment to end on. I feel very calm myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you, both of you, um, for being a part of this and for sharing um, your fantastic um, thoughts and opinions about what's going on. Um, I can already see some great comments coming through about how much people are appreciating this. So um, I think... Thank, thank you, both of you. So um, as well, thank you, everyone online, um, for... for being so responsive to having to like change the event and, and responding to these crazy times. Um, but I think the a bonus is that we've been able to um, also share this with more people um, and, and make sure everyone's getting a, the same experience. Um, and thanks for the speakers for being so willing to kind of accommodate and change based on what's going on. Um, I don't feel like we've lost any quality from having it um, online, which is fantastic. Thanks everyone. Thanks Jane and Mary. Um, Fantastic. Thanks, Sonia. It was Thanks. fun. Yeah. Now we'll definitely go and have a wine. <laughs> <laughs> One of ours is yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>